Hey, I'm Justin, and this is hey, my... Hey, this is Grizzly. This is my good friend Eddie. You've probably heard heard about him from some previous videos I've done already. And this is... Who is this? Mulu. Mulu. Um, so, as I've told you before, I'm just trying to collect people's stories. Just uh, figure out their journeys through life. So, Eddie, or Grizzly, could you... Let's start simple. Like, what's your story? What do you do here in Nashville? Work at Madison Glass Company. Okay. I resilver old mirrors, uh, old beveled mirrors. Uh, when they go bad, they get spots and streaks, and I make them look good again. Okay. Too bad I can't do that to people. No. Nah. Oh, you can do it with your beard. You've done a pretty good job. Beforehand, Eddie didn't like how his hair looked, but now he's new and improved, as you can tell. We'll have some before and after pictures later. Uh, how long have you been here in Nashville? Since 65. Oh, okay. So a good while. So that's about I was born 55. in Knoxville. Oh, so okay. My family moved here when I was about 16. And so I figured I'd better go with them. <laughs> so. so you've been in the Tennessee area pretty much all your life? All my life. Okay. Except for a short time. we They said we lived in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, okay. I don't remember much of it. I was pretty young. Oh, okay. You were small back then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how many years would you say you've been a believer? Well, that's that's the twofold question. How long have I been a believer? It's, I guess you could say that would be uh, about forty-seven years. Okay, let's see. But God has been speaking to me longer than that. Oh, okay, I see. So before that, you just didn't quite, con you knew about God, but you didn't quite connect with Him. Well, even at that, there was a, there was a time, like, when, when I was saved, I was working at the newspaper, and we used to have Bible study after we'd get off, because we worked from 8 to 4.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. When we get off, we go to one of the guys' house and have a Bible study, and that's actually when I I got saved. I was sitting over in the corner of the, his living room, and there wasn't no preacher offering a, an offer, altar call or nothing. I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit got all over me, and I know that at that moment I was saved, mm. and there's. I, I don't. I can't even explain it. I just know that it happened, and uh, and then after that, then I, we continued having Bible study for a while. Um, but and then I went through a divorce, and I kind of walked away from uh, from God. And uh, but one thing about it, He never walked away from me. That's that's the important thing that I remember. Mm -hmm. Even though I turn my back on God he never turned his back on me and he, he saw me through some times that, I mean I got back into the world you know uh, drinking and riding motorcycles and, and, and all that stuff and, and there was one one time in particular I was I, I shouldn't even been in public let alone riding a motorcycle I was intoxicated and I went into a curve too fast and then met a car and I figured this is it, it's over. Because uh, it was a hairpin turn and all that. But somehow or another, I made it through that turn. And I bet you couldn't have put a piece of paper in between me and that car. It was it was close. But, and I know that God was, he was the one that saw me through that, that uh, almost accident. And uh, so then I, I continued to, to just to live in the world and all that goes along with it. And then uh, God brought uh, my wife that just passed away into my life and she entered, she, God used her to draw me back to him because she was, uh, she knew the scripture and she introduced me to some uh, evangelists and preachers and that have helped me along the way that I still listen to them every day. And uh, uh, 
So I got back into church, joined the CMA back in 2000. Been riding with them ever since. Uh, uh, so you've been kind of on and off with God pretty much all through your life, right? Well, I was just, I, I got, I was on, off, and then back on. I've been on ever since. Mm -hmm. Not too much back and forth. Okay. I, I, I got back into the world for a few years. Oh, okay, I see. But then I got back in, you know, rededicated my life and everything. What are some changes you kind of saw in yourself when during your time with God and during the time you were with the world? Like, did you see changes. any changes? Yeah, did you see any changes in yourself? Yeah, stress, times? a lot of stress <laughs> and, and a lot of trials, a lot of um, trying to make it on my own. Uh, uh, and the financial thing is probably one of the, I don't, I don't want to say it's the best, but I mean, it, it sure has eased up my situation. I mean, I can remember back when I was in the world, I was standing at the Walgreens uh, drugstore to buy something I really needed, and I just barely had enough money to buy it. And this guy in front of me had a, so much money in his pocket and wads of bills, and, and I was actually jealous of him because he had so much money, and I just barely had enough money to buy this thing that I really need. But ever since I gave my life back to God, and uh, left him up to, to, to do whatever he wants to do and to direct me. The, the, my uh, finances have uh, improved quite a bit. Uh, everything I've got's paid for. Uh, I just uh, don't have any money problems anymore. Uh, but uh, besides that, I mean, of course, there's things like just your attitude. No one, and just like a, 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 there's a song out now called I See Your. Here I go trying to think. <laughs> That's fine. I see your. What's that song? I see your. The, I see the evidence of your presence mm -hmm. all over my life. Mm -hmm. the, I, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. And I do every. All, all the time I see is the evidence of his goodness mm. all over my life. Yeah, you had a perspective shift. You actually sent me, a, you had emailed me like the sermon about like true worship um, yeah. the other day. And like part of it was saying like true praise is just, when you truly praise God, sometimes the things in, the things in your life don't change, the world doesn't change, but your perspective your attitude, shifts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. And that yeah. can change everything from there too. Okay. What are some uh what are some things God has helped you through? What's what are some things that God has helped you through that you don't think you could have made it through when you were part of the world? Like you were talking about how He's been blessing you, how he's been providing for you. What are some like specific well, instances? When you say uh, that I couldn't make it without him, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I don't know how this is going to sound, but I mean, I, I would probably make it through because I, I believe I, since I was just a young teenage boy, I, I, I've always said there's two kinds of people in this world, those that make it and those that don't. And I know I'm always, I'm going to make it one way or another. But to make it without God would have been so much harder mm -hmm. and and just more difficult. Like that but, unneeded stress or unneeded uh, obstacles. And, yeah, and uh, and so I'm just so, so thankful that God's been right there for me. I thank Him every day, many times every day, uh, just for being there. Mm -hmm. Just mainly just for being there. Because I know as long as He's there, Everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, that's a part of your daily routine. You're telling me is just like <clears throat> getting on the same mindset of God, starting the day right, and just thanking God. Yeah, get in the Word, read His Word, pray, and then start your day. Mm -hmm. Nice. So let's go back to CMA. That's actually how Eddie and I know each other is from uh, when I joined CMA. How did you find CMA? Well, uh, that's an interesting story too because. Back 
when, when I first found CMA or God directed CMA to me, however you put it, this room right here was a pool room. I had a pool table right there. A small bar room table, still took quarters and everything. And there was a bar in that room in there. And I, guys would come over here and we'd just have fun, mm -hmm. shoot pool, whatever. And there was a guy named Steve that used to come by here. And he wasn't a believer. I don't think he cared about even trying to be or whatever. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he had met Dan Neal. He was our president at the time. Mm -hmm. He, and this Dan gave Steve a card, and Steve wasn't interested in it. So one day, I think it was right on my back porch, Steve gave me that card. And so oh, just I thought to get he, rid of it? Yeah, because he didn't want it. And he said, yeah. I, I thought maybe you'd be interested in this. And so uh, a day or two later, I called the number on the card, I called Dan, and he told me where the meetings are and everything. And I, I went to a, a meeting. Hmm. And I've been going ever since. Oh, so you weren't actually you weren't actually even looking for it. God kind of just brought you. Well, you to know the that's the way. It, that's the way it, God is a lot of times. I, yeah. People say I found God. Well, no, you didn't find God. <laughs> you God found, found you. you. Yeah. And that's just like God used the CMA to 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 get to me. And that's why I have such a passion for CMA because I know that, that that's that's what God directed me to CMA. And he's using the CMA to strengthen me. Mm. Because, I mean, what do you have to admit yourself? It's, you, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I, I never would have been praying. Like, if I was still out in the world, I, mean, I sure wouldn't be praying for people. But now mm. I, I take every, every opportunity I get to pray for somebody, and when I don't, oh, yeah. I regret it. Yeah, you every, know? yeah, I know, like, riding with you, you take, like, every opportunity to talk to a biker who's at a gas station or talk to the waitress or talk to somebody yeah. and just see if there's something we can pray about. Yeah. I think that's definitely speaks volumes for what we do. I feel like you exemplify that perfectly by reaching out to one yeah, person. Yeah, but I, I don't always do it every, every chance I get because mm -hmm. sometimes I'll walk away from a situation and be beating myself up because mm -hmm. why didn't I pray for them? Yeah. Because Sometimes you, people get in a hurry and we, you don't feel like it's the right time or whatever, you know, and so. Yeah, I, someone mentioned to me, like, you never really regret, like, people you choose to talk to. You always regret the people you don't talk yeah, to. Right, yeah. Okay. You, yeah, you were mentioning how um, CMA, uh, a Christian Motorcycle Association, by the way, I don't even know who I'm talking to. No one's going to watch this. But uh, <laughs> where is this going? Uh, I don't know. It's for myself. I I like to talk to it like there's an audience, but there's not going to be an audience. But <laughs> but uh, you were talking about how the CMA helps you grow, like, and you've been pre you were president when uh, Goat had joined as well. Like, how is that? How is that role of president, or how has being a officer of CMA helped you grow, or helped well, your journey in Christ? It helps you be able to. Speak to speak uh, like in front of people mm. oh, yeah. because you know because it's kind of it's, it, they say that's the worst thing that's the worst thing you could ask anybody to do is to speak in front of an audience yeah, it's a nice thing, yeah. and uh, but yet it's it's you have to do it as president you have to yeah. lead the meetings and if we do a church visit you're the one they call on and, yeah. and all that so it's, it's helped me in that way and Help me to just uh, open up more, I guess. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I can definitely see that. And I feel like as a Christian, that's something we have to learn to do as well because we, we're called to, like, step out of our comfort zones. If you're not good with talking to people, we're called to, like, still talk to people. The Bible even says, like, people come to faith by hearing the Word. Well, how are they going to hear the Word if... If you don't go. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh so what's been your favorite motorcycle? Just kind of off topic, kind of on topic. There's only one kind. Don't say Harley. Like specifically a model. Uh, the Ultra Classic. Ultra Classic. Oh, okay, yeah. The Ultra, yeah. I like Because it's got classic. all the bells and whistles. It's made for old people. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, what, 
What should I, as a young person, write? A sportster. A sportster. Oh, okay. Well, go to this. All right. That's fair. I can see that. <laughs> All right. Well, well it, it, fit your, it fits your size better. It, it does. There's yeah. nothing wrong with sportsters. They're, one, they're, they're pretty quick. The 1200s are mm -hmm. pretty fast. Yeah. And I like the one go to house. It is nice. All right. So just to wrap it up, do you have any last words of wisdom or anything for people who are just struggling in their faith? What's some what's some advice on? Well, I don't know about struggling in their faith, but I had some words of wisdom until you said that. Oh, okay, what's your and words of wisdom? Obey God, and leave the consequences to Him. Mm. If if you obey God, don't worry about what's going to happen because God's got it. He'll take care of it. That's Charles Stanley's favorite expression. Mm. Oh obey yeah. Obey God and leave the con consequences to Him. Oh yeah, that was the Bible study you sent me the other yeah, day. Yeah, Charles nice. Stanley, he's, he's, good. he's a good teacher. Oh, nice. I think that's a good way to end. Well, I'm Justin, this is Eddie, Grizzly, Sasquatch. Also known as Grizzly. Grizzly, Sasquatch, whatever you want. Yeah. Call him, but... And this is Mulu. And that's Mulu. Don't pull it. Don't pull he it. Don't he, like that. he don't care. He likes it. But anyway, thanks for joining us, whoever's watching us, or me in 30 years. Hey, me. <laughs> but anyway, y'all stay blessed. Yeah. Hey, speaking of 30.